Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. In this one, I'll be making another one of our customers' favourites and it's these delicious English tea cakes. These are a fruity, spicy tea time treat, traditionally served toasted with lots of butter and strawberry jam. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on my website. I'll leave links at the end and under the video, or just click on the eye icon top right of the screen. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to this week's Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are John Bateman, Mike Cabe, Jeannie Ray Martfeld, Linda Tarr, Neil Hansen and Jason Gilbert. And once again, please consider supporting my Patreon appeal for as little as $2 per month. Or if you prefer, you can make a one-off small donation using my PayPal page. It really does go a long way towards ingredients and production costs, as every penny pledged goes back into my videos. And whether you've donated or not, thanks again for your wonderful support in watching the channel. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, first job is to set your yeast away. I have the lukewarm milk in the jug and the temperature, as you can see, is approximately 40 degrees Celsius. That's 104 Fahrenheit. Next, add the sugar to the warm milk. Now add seven grams, that's two teaspoons of instant or active dried yeast. If you're using fresh yeast, it's 20 grams. Don't forget, you can view the full written recipe on the website. Just click the eye icon top right of the screen and that will take you straight to it. Now give that a good mix and set it aside until it starts to form up a bit. And if your yeast is not forming up after 10 minutes, it must be dead and it needs replacing. Right, to make sure all of the dry ingredients are evenly mixed throughout, I'll combine it all with the flour first. First in is the half teaspoon, that's 4 grams of salt. And next, for a nice citrus flavour, the rind of a whole lemon. You can use an orange if you prefer a milder citrus flavour. Next is the 2 teaspoons of allspice. Allspice is simply ground pimento berries. If you can't find allspice where you live, you can use mixed spice, which is made up of ground coriander seeds, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger and cloves. If you do use mixed spice, use three teaspoons and leave out the teaspoon of cinnamon because there's already cinnamon in the mixed spice. And in goes my allspice. And next to go into mine is the one teaspoon of cinnamon. The final dry ingredient to go in is the 150 grams, that's five and a half ounces of mixed fruit. In here, there are sultanas, raisins, currants, and mixed candied peel. You should be able to get a basic fruit cake mix where you live. Now give that a good mix until everything is evenly combined. Now to knead the dough, I'll be using my stand mixer. You can knead this by hand, but it does start out as a pretty sticky dough. And if you want to know how to hand knead wet sticky dough, check out my pita bread video recipe. Right, as you can see, the yeast is starting to form up, so that means the yeast is alive and well. So that goes into the bowl, followed by the beaten egg and the oil. And to save the flour from flying out of the bowl once the mixer starts, I'll be adding mine a little at a time while the machine is running. Right, that's all the flour in the bowl. Once it's been mixing for a minute, it should look like this. 
Now it needs to be kneaded until it starts the release from the sides of the bowl. That normally takes anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. And just out of interest I've set the stopwatch on the timer so you can see exactly how long it takes to start releasing from the sides of the bowl. After 5 minutes there's very little change. After 10 minutes you can see it's starting to come away. And after 12 and a half minutes all the gluten strands have joined together and the dough is ready to come out. First job is to lightly oil a separate bowl for the first proof. Okay, I'll turn it out onto a floured surface, sprinkle a little flour on the door, then form it into a ball. And then I'll get it into the bowl, cover it, I use a plain old shower cap for mine as many of my regular viewers will know. It keeps the dough moist while allowing it to breathe. I do have these in the website shop along with other tools I use in the videos if you're interested in buying any. It's just another way of supporting the channel as all profits go right back into my videos. I'll leave a link in the description box below or just click on the eye icon top right of the screen. Now I'll set the timer for one hour. This time may vary depending on the temperature of your kitchen. And to give you an idea, my kitchen is 23 Celsius at the moment, which is about 74 Fahrenheit. Right, after one hour your dough should have at least doubled in size. And as you can see, mine is looking well risen. Now I'll turn it out onto a floured surface and knock it back. That simply means get all of the gas out of it. And then I'll form it into a ball. Once that's done, I'll get it onto the scales. And if your quantities were correct at the beginning, your dough should weigh 1.12 kilograms, which is 40 ounces. Now this recipe makes 8 tea cakes, so I'll divide the total by 8, and that tells me each piece of dough needs to be 140 grams, or 5 ounces each. You can eyeball them if you want, but I much prefer to weigh each one. Right, I'll quickly speed through dividing them, and after that, each piece needs to be rolled into a ball. If you want to learn this rolling technique, I go into a lot more detail in my dinner roll video. Once all 8 balls are formed, sprinkle a little flour over them and let them rest for 10 minutes. This will make it much easier to form them into the final shape. Now these will rise quite a bit, so I'll be baking mine on a couple of lightly greased baking trays with four tea cakes on each one. A good tip here, whatever you're baking, is to mark the grease with your finger where you want each piece to sit. Right after the 10 minutes, the dough balls should be very easy to shape into discs as shown. Now place each one on the baking tray as you're doing them. Now 
Now cover the tea cakes with a dry, lightweight cloth and once again let them proof for one hour. When there's only 10 minutes left on the rise, preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 5. I'm setting mine to 170 degrees because my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. And after that second hour, your tea cake should be well risen. Now get them into the preheated oven and set your timer for 15 minutes. And also they will spring some in the oven. When the time's up, get them out of the oven and onto a wire rack to cool. One optional step I do with mine is give the tops a coat of a simple 50-50 sugar and hot water glaze. Now I'll brush this on the tops of the tea cakes while they're still warm. But like I said, this is an optional step, but it's so easy to do and it does make a difference. With taste, but more importantly, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And as you can see, they have a great light soft crumb on the inside, and the crust on the outside should be fairly soft too. Okay, it's been 30 minutes since they came out of the oven, and like I said at the beginning, these are traditionally served toasted with lots of butter and jam. Sadly, I'm not allowed jam due to my diabetes, but I will be trying one with some of my homemade butter. Right, I'll get plenty of butter on and give half of one of these beauties a try. And if you want to know how I make this butter at home, I'll leave a link in the description box below or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen. And they are absolutely gorgeous and I really hope you give these a try. And that my friends is another one of our customers favourites getting a big thumbs up. Well thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.